heads are better than two. Or one for that matter. Is that so? Yeah. Hold that. Uh. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fictional trios. We're from out of town. For this list, we're taking a look at the most memorable teams in film and TV comprised of three individuals. No more, no less. Please don't put it to. Number 10, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, DuckTales. Let's get out of here! While they were featured in various shorts and comics for years, it was DuckTales that escalated these identical Duck Brothers to another level of fame and distinguished them with red, blue, and green outfits. Look, there's that suspicious guy we saw on the street! Although their similarities outweigh their differences, each offers something unique, with Huey being the leader, Dewey being the smart one, and Louie being the creative thinker. The trio also brings out the best in their greedy great-uncle Scrooge and seemingly always irritated Uncle Donald. Yes, Uncle Donald. No, back to me. No, Uncle Donald. As for their parents' whereabouts, hopefully we'll figure that out someday with a DuckTales revival. All for one and one for all! Number 9. Buffy Summers, Willow Rosenberg, and Xander Harris, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. First of all, I'm a vampire slayer. And secondly, I'm retired. Hey, I know! Why don't you kill him? Upon arriving in Sunnydale, Buffy Summers quickly learns that a leader is only as good as her followers. Oh, that sounds like fun. Although the burden of being the slayer is initially appointed to her and her alone, that doesn't stop Buffy's pals Willow and Xander from providing backup. I'm gonna need every single one of you on board. Especially you, Xander. Throughout the series, Willow evolves from an insecure geek to an all-powerful witch, while Xander goes from goofball screw-up to gifted strategist and counselor. And here's the mind-numbing fear. What do I have to do? Even when new love interests and companions eventually join their little Scooby gang, the bond between these three remains thicker than blood. Oh, me and Buffy go way back. Old friends. Very close. Then there's that period of estrangement where I think we were both growing as people, but now here we are like old times. I'm quite moved. Number 8. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise. And we are the Chipmunks! Almost never using his head, the reckless, cocky Alvin constantly gets him and his rodent brothers into crazy shenanigans. Over my dead body! As a result, the high-strung Simon typically needs to use his head to get them out of trouble. As for Theodore, he only thinks with his stomach. Oh, yeah! While their mindsets aren't in unison, their high-pitched voices certainly are. Possibly the most unlikely superstars in the history of music, this Grammy Award-winning threesome has remained relevant in our popular culture for over 50 years, with numerous novelty records, cartoons, and movies. Number 7. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, Animaniacs. We are the maniacs. Dot is cute and Yakko yaks. Wacko packs away the snacks while the plate and plays the sacks. We are the maniacs. Imagine if the Marx Brothers were reincarnated as Looney Tunes. You'd get Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. We're the Warner Brothers. And the Warner Sister. The Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister are as close as any sibs can be finishing each other's punchlines and improvising musical numbers on the spot. Now our first quarter figures are really low as there's a business a graph will hopefully show. As much as they like to cause mischief, the Warners all have playful affection for one another and even some of the people they prank. That was just collegatory. She's still sick. You get us for one more day. Depending on whether or not you're in on their jokes, these animaniacs will either make you laugh hysterically or drive you insane. Nighty night, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Number six, Ash Ketchum, Misty, and Brock, Pokemon. Phew, for a while there, I thought I was gonna be in this forest for the rest of my life. At age 10, chances are good you wanted nothing more than to quit school, abandon your parents, and become a Pokemon master. I will be a Pokemon master. At least that's how it is for this anime series protagonist. And no Pokemon adventure would be complete without your two best friends to accompany you. Lucky for Ash Ketchum, he has Brock, a Pokemon breeder, 
To tell you the truth, I get more pleasure from raising Pokemon than from making them battle. And Misty, a water Pokemon specialist by his side. Yes, for Pokemon! While he's taken on new companions throughout his journey, it's the charming friendship Ash shares with Brock and Misty that made the Indigo League episodes a series highlight. Just don't get shippers started on Ash and Misty's relationship. Pikachu, let's try to lose her! Shoot. Wait up, Ash! You won't get away! And so, with a new friend and ally and Misty close behind, Ash continues on his quest to become a Pokemon master. Number 5. Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, the Lord of the Rings franchise. What if we hold true to each other? With the fate of Middle-earth at stake, it's gonna take more than just one race to challenge the Dark Lord Sauron. Men, elves, and dwarves must raise their swords, bows, and axes together. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. After branching off from the hobbits, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli set out to fight, and later band together to summon the army of the dead. Three days of night's pursuit. No food, no rest. No sign of our quarry, but what fair rock can tell. Even if the three of them went up against Sauron's forces alone, they'd still be guaranteed victory thanks to Aragorn's leadership, Legolas's impeccable shooting, and Gimli's, well, Gimli makes his friends look good. What's happening out there? Shall I describe it to you? Or would you like me to find you a box? <laughs> Number four, Eddie, Ed, and Ed, 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 and Eddie. Hey, Double D! What took you so long? Oh, hello, Eddie. On paper, these neighborhood chums have little in common. Ed having no brain, Ed or Double D being a brain, and Eddie only having money on his brain. Hey! I know just what to do! The Eds have two things that make them compatible, however. Their names and their mutual love of jawbreakers. JAWBREAKERS! Every day, the three devise scams to cheat the other neighbor kids out of their allowances. Get em! <laughs> of course, the schemes typically backfire, leaving them with no money, no jawbreakers, not even a piece of buttered toast. Even in failure, though, at least they still have each other. You heard them, boys. Case closed. Number three, Moe, Larry, and Curly, the Three Stooges franchise. I am very happy to see this little gathering. That slapstick might be easy, but the Three Stooges proved that it takes true comedic geniuses to pull quality slapstick off. Well, you've got to. <laughs> Idiotic while also being clever, Larry, Curly, and Moe were their own unique blend of physical humor, farce, and vocal expressions that few comedy trios have been able to top. You know, our motto has always been one for all and all for me. Though there were lineup changes throughout the years, including Shemp, Joe, and Curly Joe, it's this particular trio that represented the Stooges at their best, as they derived sharp comedy out of everything from practicing medicine to dictatorship. Yeah! 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 Yeah, man! Hallelujah! Number two, Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, the Three Musketeers franchise. Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. Hello. Nice to meet you again. Pleasure. Even if you've never read the original 1844 novel by Alexandre Dumas, or seen any of the film adaptations, you've likely at least heard of the Three Musketeers. I may not have the tunic, but I have the heart of a musketeer. Their team name is simply that powerful, reaching out to several generations of audiences and providing a blueprint for almost every other trio that followed. Oh, one and one <laughs> Their name aside, the Three Musketeers are great individual heroes too. With the spirited Porthos, arrogant Aramis, and emotionally restrained Athos, each making up one third of the timeless team. They are not my son. We are with you always. All for one. One for all. Always having each other's backs, the three define the phrase "all for one and one for all." All for one. All for all. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I thought you said men like us don't have families. I was wrong. You know, guys, I've been thinking about it, and I don't think we should go through with this. Well, what are you, a Freddy cat? Are these the Nazis, Walter? Not down to these men are nihilists. There's nothing to be afraid of. Is that where you're staying? <laughs> 
I can't afford any place else unless I can find someone to share an apartment with. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger, the Harry Potter franchise. Oh, this can't be good. In a wizarding world of seemingly incompetent adults, it's up to these adolescents to defeat Lord Voldemort. Protego Totalen. Salvia Hexia. What are you doing? Being the boy who lived, Harry's name is often solely plastered in newspaper headlines. You're Harry Potter! While the brave Harry deserves credit where credit is due, he wouldn't have made it past first year at Hogwarts if it weren't for the brilliant Hermione and the wisecracking Ron, both of whom introduced him to the notions of friendship and family. All right there, Ron. All right. You? All right. Hermione? Never better. Strongest when together, but equally interesting when apart. Harry, Ron, and Hermione are what truly made J.K. Rowling's series magic. Right. I'm going down to Hagrid's. Do you agree with our list? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Who's your favorite fictional trio? We love you. What? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.